welcome to 24-7 Moms. We are back live with you with our Unstoppable Living Morning Conversation. I'm Trisha Novotny and this guy is... I'm Steve Novotny and it's great to be here on this beautiful morning and talk about all good things about life and doing stuff. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, so we are thinking about, not I shouldn't say thinking, we are going to take our kids, meaning teenagers and adult, to see a movie this evening. And I'm not sure if you've heard about it, but I wanted to kind of give a shout out for it, even though I haven't seen it yet. I've heard great reviews about it. I don't typically give a movie a review and encourage people to go see it before I've seen it. However, this movie's only, I believe, in the theater for a few days, so by the time I go see it and get back to telling everybody about it, it could be long gone and you won't have the opportunity. It's called Unplanned, and it's a movie about a lady who worked in um, at Planned Parenthood, mm -hmm. and it's her journey of working there and what she discovered and why she left, and that's all I'm really going to tell you about it. And so... Um, I'm excited to see it. I'm excited to see some truth brought to the big screen and um, experience it even with my kids and really sharing with them somebody else's story, not just what mom and dad believe about this topic of abortion. And, you know, it's been all over the news talking about it um, because of New York making their decisions. So anyways, I'm excited to take our kids to it. It's mm -hmm. not a super happy movie, but it's... Um, it's going to be good. It's going to be interesting to see it and get my kids' perspective on it. And I know it will be heart-wrenching at the same time. So anyways, if you um, have some time this week, I encourage you to get out there and see the movie Unplanned for two reasons. One, to um, educate ourselves more on this topic as well as our children, uh, meaning a little bit older kids. I wouldn't be taking your five-year-olds to this. Second, because we want to support things like this. Right. And the way we support them is by going and paying for our tickets and buying our ticket and going and showing um, the movie world and the world in general that we support this and that this is what we want um, people to be aware of. So anyways, check it out. Unplanned. It's in select movie theaters, so we have to drive a little ways away to go see it for us. So we're going to make it a night out with our family and go to dinner and go see this movie. Our so boys aren't super excited about going because, of course, it doesn't have superheroes involved in it or weird hauntings or uh, yeah, but I think strange they, monsters. I think what they'll discover, there's a new superhero in it, and it's this, this lady that um, actually left Planned Parenthood. And she's a new superhero in my mind of yeah. what she's what she's doing now with what she experienced and how she what she was spending her days doing now she's counteracting that with changing and doing something different. Anyways, um, that's what we're doing tonight. And where are we going to go eat dinner at? Well, the kids all want to go to Olive Garden. Do you have a better suggestion? So I have to follow my plan today if I'm going to do Olive Garden. I have means a new... you don't eat. Oh, oh that okay, means you're so... me grumpy. No, I've got this new thing no, I'm no. trying. I have a friend of mine I met that says like he lost 40 pounds. Now, I usually follow a normal program, but I'm just adjusting a few things. <laughs> and this kind of works for me. Uh, it's easy to do. It works for you. Okay. I eat a really great dinner. Like I'm trying, it's kind of like a form of intermittent fasting. So my eating window right now is from about 4 to 8 p.m. That's the only time you eat. And let me tell you, at about 3.45, <laughs> 4 o'clock, 4... You know, no, you don't eat till dinner. So we don't eat dinner till like 5.30. So well, up, last night. Up until that moment, he is Mr. Grumpy. And, and this I was he, a little tense. Multiple times now over the last few days, he has said to me, I haven't eaten today. Ooh, that sounds like something his wife used to say. Okay. But she didn't realize she was hypoglycemic and True. she wouldn't eat. So Grumpy is going to be grumpy again Well, today. some of that wasn't planned and it was very poor planning on my part because you should always have food available <clears throat> depending on what you're doing there's a lot of new science on this but anyway so what i'm doing is is like i'm not gonna eat. i have a little bit of cream in my coffee that's about it uh -huh. and uh i won't eat until olive garden tonight okay then pull it then oh. then he is gonna eat a lot of olive garden because you should have seen his dinner plate last night it was all of the rest of the family's food combined on one plate Pretty much just how we no, 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 no. But I could be <laughs> fooling myself. I don't know. We'll see. I'm gonna and then get... he sleeps on it. Go figure. I don't know. Well, it was 5.30. I didn't go to sleep till like 10. I know, but you didn't go work out or anything after you ate all that food. I went walking before. That's true. Okay. 
Anyways, we'll see how Steve does. I'll let y'all know tomorrow if he was Mr. Grumpy again today. Um, today we thought we would talk about what, how do we plan our lives, as in how do we plan our week and our days? What is the system that we use? How do we go about doing it? Maybe what are some of our tips and tricks and secrets and stuff about what we do? Right. Steve and I are very different people when it comes to organization and planning. I'm a planner. I like to know the plan. Um, I am not a huge procrastinator unless I don't want to do it. Um, we... I like to write everything out. I'm a writer. I'm a list maker. This guy is not as much. And so we plan very differently and according to our styles. And so we're going to kind of just talk about that a little bit today. So in, in the disc, which, you know, some people have talked about, which is uh-huh. a, which is a uh, character, would you say character traits or more um, your... It's how you behave. It's more of a behavior. It's a behavioral test. Really good to do. If and you how like you move. behave and how you respond to the way other right. people respond to you and how you function. And yeah, I would say it's a behavior so, test. So it stands for D-I-S-C, which, which are, is a direct in, influencer. Oh, since I'm not a high C, I don't remember what it is. D-I-S-O. I can't remember that. I forget two. either. He's going to look it up while we're talking. Anyways, because I'm a high D and a high I, which means I'm a high commander that wants to influence the world. That's basically what it means. It means that I want to be in charge and have you all come along with me for the ride. So my positivity in my influencing creates me to be a leader that wants to con- to actually encourage you and inspire you to right. do, but do what I'm doing as well. Anyway, so that's what it is. He's going to look up what the other ones meant. I totally forgot what they meant. D-I- I know, it's terrible. I shouldn't even have brought it up. Yeah, you should have because we were talking about that today. Anyways, we are very different. And so we're going to talk about how we plan our weeks and days and maybe give you a few tips along the way. And then you can even like think about how you do it. And I think really the first thing you have to do is evaluate for you if you're challenged in this area or you just want some new ideas how to do it. And if you're challenged in this area and you're thinking, I really got to get this area of my life together. How do I plan my day? How do I plan my week? How do I stop forgetting that I have a doctor's appointment, forgetting that my kids have some event going on at school? How do I stop doing that? Then you have to first figure out what is keeping you from being organized, right? So what is it that in your own brain is keeping you from doing that? And generally, it's finding a system. And so a couple ways that you can have systems are you can either use moi, your phone, right? A lot of people use this. There's a lot of apps now for organizing. I can tell you all kinds of apps that you can just Google them and search out apps for family organizing, apps for organizing my life. There's just all kinds of them. I have tried to use some of my phone stuff, but I am a paper person. And it's funny because I think, oh, that's just generational. But I see my daughter, my young daughter, she's got her little like binder thing and she sits and writes in it and everything. So I don't know. I think that that's not necessarily a generational thing. I think that that is just who we are and how we function because I like to see it all laid out. Well, and there is something to, to do with the whole part of tactile writing. That, yeah. That, that, that brain yeah. to an actual action, mm-hmm. physical action is, mm-hmm. is, uh, the glue, uh, the brain kind of sees it like glue. Right. Kind of helps you really memorize it. So, uh, so what's weird about me is I literally do daily sheets, right? So I write out things every day and if I don't accomplish them, I move them to the next day. I don't just keep one sheet and then just cross it off. I, and I think that's because for me, the more I write it down, the more it becomes a priority in my life. And I, and I keep feeding it into me that I, these are my goals. This is my dreams. This is the things I need to get done this right. week. And it helps me to remember it as well in my brain. So anyways, we're going to talk about the reason why I believe in writing it down or typing it into your phone or putting it into your computer, wherever your system is, is because one, it's a brain dump for us. Mm-hmm. We are able to dump our brains and get it out there mm-hmm. and not, and hopefully not have to think about it as much because we put it someplace where we can go back and find it. Right. right. Then the other thing is it's great reminders. It helps us to remember things. Like I've said before, I take piece, I have little notepads about this big um, and I keep them in my bathroom drawer and while I'm getting ready in the morning when I think of things I jot it down and then I tear that piece of paper off and bring it down and then put it into my binder or whatever my grocery list my Costco list whatever wherever that needs whatever list that information needs to go right sometimes it's that I'm listening to a podcast they tell me about a book so I write it down I go add it, add it to my book list so I keep lists for as many things as I can so it helps me with reminders brain dumping it helps me to de-stress otherwise I'm the person that Thinks about it all day long until I get it down on paper mm-hmm. and you think about And it helps me in my planning. And where am I going? What am I doing? I'm able to look at my big to-do list and go, okay, these are the things that need to get done this week. 
and I can jot them down. So what I do is, and I'm, she's much more better at this than me, is that, <coughs> excuse me, I, I do a Sunday night brain dump mm-hmm. of everything that's going on from the past, where we're going to the future, write a brand new script, mm-hmm. if you will, for my week. Yeah. And then I work on that during the week, and then I keep adding little sub notes to that. Um, I think I should probably, the busier I get, should recalibrate that at least a couple times. You know, completely redo the list right. again. You talked about um, the other day that you were journaling at the end of the day and yeah. how your day is going. Are you still doing that? I am. I'm not as successful as I would want to be. Because uh, when I come home at night sometimes, I don't open my binder to really take a look where I'm at. And I'm learning to do that. So I've been doing it about two, three nights a week. Uh-huh. And I really would love to do it every night where I'm kind of going through my day and I'm grading my day, okay? And I have a friend who's doing this too, and we came up with something interesting. So we're grading our day between plus two, plus one, zero, minus one, minus two. So there's five different ways that we feel like our day went. Now, how much we got done, yeah. how we feel about the day. And plus two is like, today was a great day. I felt great. Versus minus two means like everything went wrong. So... <clears throat> The majority of mine are plus ones. That's good. I'm not, I don't know. And my friend says, you know, every day I'm usually about a plus one. And I said, you know, I wanted to make it a plus two today. We were talking about a particular day. I said, but I had unfinished business. Right. And I thought I couldn't write a plus two because... I don't think I could ever make a plus two because I always have unfinished business as a mom. Yeah, but uh, yeah, but yeah. it's again, it's how you feel. Now, so right. for me, the unfinished business oh, made me feel like... Right. I feel very accomplished on certain days and other days I don't feel as accomplished. Right. Because I got sidetracked with other things. I didn't get as much as I thought I was going to get accomplished. They were talking about this on the Mastermind on our call yesterday. Did mm-hmm. you hear them talking about this? Somebody was bringing up the whole thing about how at the end of the day... He kind of grades himself and writes out Mm -hmm. and gives himself different points and stuff. So Mm -hmm. it's kind of a trendy thing, I think, right now. But anyway, so back to the list. So we, I feel like it's really important to write a list. If that's who you are, you need a brain dump, you need those reminders, you need to de-stress, write it down. Create lists that work for you. So first you need to choose your system. What kind of system do you want to use? Do you want to use paper? Do you want to use a binder? Like I use, I use a big binder. There's little binders. I mean, there's little binders, there's medium-sized binders, there's big binders, there's wall calendars there is so many systems but you got to use what works for you then there's the whole idea of using the electronics you know using your phone or using, using your both computer. use a mixture right. of both yeah it can get <clears throat> confusing i highly do not suggest you keep two calendars people will write down they have a doctor's appointment on one calendar and then they'll look at their electronic calendar and go oh yeah i can meet you for lunch and then guess what? They missed their doctor's appointment. But see, like my calendars are synced. I anything right. I put in my calendar on my online well, goes everywhere. It's actually impossible for you to sync a paper calendar and an electronic calendar, just so you know. Not necessarily true. They got this new kind of paper. <laughs> Stop. That, I'm serious. No, but I'm talking to moms I know who you have wall I know you Okay. So then the next step after you choose your system is to categorize. Like what kind of categories do you want? I've been posing these questions out on Facebook. Um, what's your favorite planner for um, keeping your life organized? What are the things that you would include in the planner? And yes, there's a goal in mind. 24 7 Moms is in the process of, of evaluating if we're going to create a planner from 24 7 Moms to actually help and give a resource to moms around the world. So you have to create categories, right? And so one of the things that I was asking people, she what do they do want? And some people want weekly, some people want daily, um, some people want like places to create their menus. Um, how to put it in modules, like for business, for family, for personal, different ways to do that. And so create categories that you need. For me, I need shopping lists. I need menu planning. I need an area to put my goals and my dreams for the future on. I need a place to keep my big, long to-do list, the things I just keep thinking I need to do, I need to do. Then I need the urgent list. You know, so there's all these different things. And yeah, I do have a lot of lists, but that works for me. Mm-hmm. I'm not telling you that's going to work for you. So figure out what is it that bothers you, what do you need, and what will help you. So make categories. Um, I have categories in my binder. So my binder is broken up into um, my week which means my week has a weekly to-do list. This is just my daily habits. And so this is broke down into every day and it has like my workout so I can cross them off. Then, ah, sorry. The next sheet after that becomes my daily sheet. And I do one of these every single day. She I have does. Right now. And yep, I have them in different colors. In the front, I have a little pen, pencil holder that I keep all my color pens in. But I make one for every day and mine is broken down to modules. 
and I, I'm just going to kind of go like this. And then it's broken down into 24 7 moms, broken down into personal. It's broken down into my family with all their names. And as you can see, if you can really see it, I've been writing on it because I'm trying to recreate what will work for me. As I said, we're trying to design one, so I am kind of playing with different ones. But I have it broke down in each of the family members that I do things for right now, which are the immediate people living in my home. Then my schedule, like what is actually do I have on my schedule today? And then I have what I need to go, where errands I need to run today, and what my meal plan is for the day. Mm -hmm. So that's all on here. Some people want to have little places where it shows how much water they've drank. So this is what works for me. I take six of them out. I use one for Saturday, Sunday. I don't use two. And so and I at the beginning of the week, I write on all of them my schedule, my dinner plan, my everything that I can actually fill in. And then throughout the week, as I move to the next day, generally before I go to bed at night, I fill out tomorrow's list. Yeah, so you are really I done. good at it. But it helps me. It, it keeps her sane. It really mm -hmm. does. Now, the categories is interesting because <clears throat> they've done a lot of research on this. And the brain thinks in chunks, mm. right? So uh -huh. when you say categories, that's really the way the brain thinks. it. So when we do a to-do list, instead of just writing one list, write the most important things you need to remember. Like right. for me, it would be like a, a project. I put mm -hmm. projects down because my brain thinks in chunks right. on a project or something I'm supposed to do. So sim very similar to categories. Put the category right. down and then put the to-do list for that right. category so subject. One of the things for me is I do write more things than I'm going to accomplish on that day because I need to keep remembering. I need to get those done this week, right? So these are the things I need to get done this week that came from my master list over onto my daily list for the week. And I keep moving them from day to day. I evaluate that list every night and I think, oh, mm -hmm. wow. Like for instance, I needed to mail my kids' diplomas off to another organization because they're moving to a different country to mm -hmm. um, teach there. So they, they ordered their college diplomas again and I had to get them someplace. That became urgent. That So I create this little sticky every night that is what I have to do tomorrow, meaning it says 7.30, the show, 8.15, devotions, 9 o'clock, I'm going to paint my frames today because I want to make sure they get dry. I'm painting some frames. 9.30, I need to leave and go do my errands. It's on there, exactly what I need to do. And then things like movie tickets I need to buy, the things that have to get done today, this is I need to do. The rest is then I can go back and look at my list inside my binder and know, oh, okay, I can get these things done. This is what that means. It, this is kind of my cheat sheet to my quick looking at it. I don't know why this is how I do it. It's no, probably it looks more good. work than most of you want to do. What a wife. But I'd like that. Me. Give your husband a back rub. <laughs> that is it doesn't matter. Honey, later, that. later, later. But later. it has my schedule in here because otherwise, literally, ladies, I can forget that I need to take a child to his workout today at 2.30 because my mind is just thinking about so many different things. And so that's how I do it. So again, back to the categories, making reminders for yourself, and then having your supplies handy. I have everything in this binder, right? So I have my pens, my pencil that I, I like to write on my calendar in pencil so I can erase it. Um, I have these little clear sheets in here. These um, hold things like upcoming travel documents, um, the things I've asked my assistant to do so I can remember what I've asked her to do because just ask her She'll tell you I forget everything I've told her. I have it all divided I have little holders in the back that hold um, You know additional copies that I need you know printed Sorry the photocopies of my actual daily sheets are in here So I keep it all in one binder so I can grab this sit down with it I can sit in bed and do it I can take it up and watch TV with my family and do it wherever I'm going I can just grab my binder so my supplies are handy my latest supply that I just got I'm so excited about I'm not the most creative person but the area I do like to be creative in is my planner and I got these fun stickers for my planner are they not the coolest? Oh, those are. Aren't they the coolest? So yeah. add color. It's called Plan for Tomorrow, Celebrate Today. I got them from Amazon. Wow. They're so cool. Anyways, um, they'll last me for a long time. They got all kinds of things. Little color. Just to add some color. That adds creativity and fun to me. Yeah. Um, that's where I find it. Some people find it in journaling. Some people find it in painting. I find it in my planner, crazy enough. Um, so have your supplies handy. And then... Um, make this a habit weekly or daily, whichever works for you. If it works to sit down Sunday night, Saturday, maybe it's Friday, maybe it's Monday morning, whatever works for you, sit down and think about where do I need to go this week? What do I need to do this week? What are the important things for my family? What are we going to eat for dinner? Again, the things that drive you crazy, it's like you're always dropping the ball on. Is it always that you don't know what's for dinner? 
five o'clock comes and the, your kids are saying, what's your dinner? And you're like, yeah, mm -hmm. I'm not sure because the dishes from lunch are still in the sink. Mm -hmm. So if that's the area, then create a menu. Start with that. Just start mm -hmm. with menu. Mm -hmm. If it's that you keep forgetting the things that you want to get done this week, start with a list of to-dos. Right. If it's your schedule, you keep forgetting where you're supposed to be, then just start on Sunday night writing out your schedule for the week. That on Monday, your kids have these events. On Tuesday, you have this. On Wednesday, you have this. And write it out. So I just want to say, make it a habit and it helps to simplify your life. But I have found that if I begin my day with it by looking at my to-do list and then ending my day with it, it generally makes my each day flow and I just check, 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 check. So when you get up in the morning, uh, cause of course, you know, we're all getting ready and stuff. When do you actually sit down and look at your list for the day? When do I look at it? Yeah. You say get ready in the morning. Like what typically do you, is it when everyone goes out the door and you have a chance to sit down? No, I've already looked at my list. So you've already looked at your mm -hmm. list. So, well, it depends, just depends on the craziness of the morning, right? So generally because I've been trying to get up and going and working out on certain mornings at five o'clock in the morning, then I already know that in my head, I've got to get five o'clock in the morning, right? So then it's when I get back from my workout, after I take a shower and I work, I know. So sometimes it's before the show and sometimes it's after the show. Okay. It just depends. It depends on the morning, but She's never... kicking my butt right now. She's getting up. Mm -hmm. What time you get up? 5 a.m.? Mm -hmm. Getting to the gym by 5.30, being done by 6.30. How nice is that? I just haven't figured that it's out It's awesome. Yet. It totally starts my day. And I feel like I bought back time for my day. No, that because I agree generally with. I was going around 9. I was going to yeah. a 9 o'clock class, getting home around 10.30. You know, starting, sometimes I was having to come back home and pick up the house. Right. So my days don't start until like 11 o'clock. And it's like, I can't do that. I got right. things to get done. So I changed my schedule a little bit. But again, I just look at it. And I keep it, uh, that's why I put it on this little piece of paper because I can look at this a lot quicker than going into my binder. So that works for me. But again, it's a brain dump for you. It helps you have reminders. So choose your system, figure out what categories, what areas of your life you want to get right. most organized. Get your supplies, get some new fun colored pens if that's what you're about. Get new paper, colored paper, get a new notepad. It doesn't have to be expensive. You can, I, for a long time, I took binder paper every day, drew lines on it like this and put my modules in it. And right. that's where I started trying to right. figure out what it was. And then make it a habit, whether it's weekly, daily, morning and night. I know I'm obsessive, so morning and night, whatever it is. Um, that's what you So need. how do you create, let's just say you're a person like me, which I I, I have so much going on. You I do you? this. Uh, well, you, 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 you work on that every day. <laughs> like, don't scratch this table. But uh, uh, no, but actually, you are really, really good at it. So um, what would be like one little tip? I don't mean to stump you, but I mean, because like, what would be one little tip to just help a mom who's, let's say she's so busy going through kids stuff that they could just get that list done during the day. What would be kind of a secret to help them? Okay. So if she's a mom of little ones, there's nappers, right? Mm -hmm. I would do it during nap time. Okay. Good I idea. Would, I would tell, I would tell myself, put the babies down for the nap, the toddlers down, the preschoolers, whoever's down for nap. And as soon as they're down, I would take 20, 30 minutes of that nap time, maybe even set a timer so that you know you're only gonna do it for those few minutes. So, because I know our nap times are so precious that maybe that's your time for your downtime, or maybe that's the time you clean house or whatever. But I would take, you know, anywhere from 15 to 30 minutes and I would just dump and I would write down all the things that I, where, where, what's bothering me the most. Mm -hmm. Again, I always go back to what bothers me the most. Mm -hmm. What do I need to get organized the most? Is okay. it my kids' schedules? Is it shopping lists? Good strategy. It, and I would start there. And then the next day, I would start with the next thing and the next thing. And then as soon as you've got that figured out, again, if you decide that you want to have a weekly schedule or a daily schedule, I would do it during nap time. Yeah. If you're a mom of school age kids, as soon as they head out the door in your home, I would do it. Right there. If you're a working mom, I would do it on Sunday night. I would I would take my Sunday, or some portion of my weekend and sit down and do it. I know you're tired, but let me tell you, you will feel so much more energized because your brain isn't carrying around all of this stuff. Well, that's the thing. You are you are organizing your brain, which allows your brain to get busy and do what it's mm -hmm. supposed to do, which is to figure things out. Right. And you know what else happens? When we schedule our days or we schedule our week and our month, we stop over scheduling. How many times have we're great at it as moms? We say yes, we say yes, we say yes, and we fit it in, and somehow we think we're going to be able to accomplish all because we forgot we made all these other commitments. And next thing we know, we are 
completely overwhelmed and stressed. And we say yes to things for our kids as well. Like, oh, sure, they can play baseball, take dance lessons, play the piano, and take acting classes all at the same time every week, four yeah. or five lessons. And we did that for a long time until we started looking at our calendar and became intentional. And we start, I started doing things where my kids' activities were on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And if it didn't fit on, because then those were going to be my crazy days, right? We were going to eat a crock pot meal. We were going to go from the minute they got out of school till night. And those, but then I wasn't going to have craziness on Monday. Wednesday and Friday, right? So, uh, and then if it didn't work on Tuesday and Thursday, then you get to do it. Like that Very was good just point. Plan your crazy days. Mm-hmm. You're going to have some, so right. plan a couple. Plan them. And then mark on your calendar when you're going to have a date with your husband. Mark on your calendar Ooh, like when that. you're going to have family time. Mark on your calendar when you're going to have downtime. When you're going to have coffee with a friend. Maybe it's every Monday you're going to have coffee with a friend and you're going to choose a different friend every week to invite to coffee. You have to be intentional about creating those moments as well. So learn to say no to things. Um, make your intentional calendars with marking out the important things to you, family vacations, downtime, kids, dates, all those kinds of things. And my last tip is write big on your calendar. Why? Because if you write big on the day, you'll think that day's full and you'll stop trying. To, if you write tiny, you'll keep adding because oh, that count, that day visually looks like I can fit more into it. So right big. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, those are my tips well, good for you. Thoughts. Plan your week, plan your days, and we will see you. Do you have anything more to say? No, I okay. think she did well. Uh, we're, we're working on this. This is, uh, Trisha's so good at this. So I appreciate you. I learn some every time I hear her, and uh, I can verifiably tell you, she does everything she just said. This is, she is not a poser. <laughs> and uh, our family is so much better for it. I mean, I feel feel sometimes mm-hmm. embarrassed how organized we are because we well, just not every area of our life but we're getting there well yeah I mean, you know there's some things but anyway yeah. we need to end okay thanks for joining us we'll see you again tomorrow 7 30 a.m pacific Talk standard time later. see you later